Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now recently I needed some more disk space because I'm making loads and loads of videos and they really just chew through your disk space. So I bought some network attached storage. In fact, I bought a Synology DS420J. Bought it with my own money so that I can store my files on it. And I thought, well, since I have it, why don't I do a review? So this is gonna be a quick look and a setup guide for the Synology. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you my conclusion here at the beginning, because if you're just wondering whether you should buy one or not, I'll tell you now. Then I'm gonna do the kind of the details and the setup guide and how I'm, how I'm actually using it. And then at the very end, I'll talk about whether you should buy a single bay, a two bay, or a four bay, or even bigger. But my conclusion for those who want a quick answer is it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I was actually quite shocked on how easy it was to set up and get working and how it's actually not given me a single piece of trouble ever since I've had it. So basically it's, it's really good. Now let's talk about what it actually is and how it all works. So network attached storage is, as the name applies, storage. So hard disk that's attached to your network. So normally of course a hard disk would be connected to the PC through you know SATA or maybe you know an M2 connector or USB, some kind of connector between your desktop PC, your laptop and the storage. But you know I've already got lots of hard drives in my PC and there's only so much you can connect to it. So it's useful to have storage on the network. Now you might not be using it for you know your actual booting up of Windows. You certainly won't be using it for that. You won't be using it for running your programs. But where you want to store files like video files like I'm doing from all the work that I'm doing here on YouTube, then it's brilliant to have it on the network. It doesn't need to be lightning fast, it needs to be fast, but not lightning fast, and you can copy over the files over there, and if you need them, very easily get hold of them. So Synology offer a whole range of different devices, and we'll talk more about that at the end. I went with the DS420J, that means it's got four bays, that's what the four at the beginning means, 20 means it's the one that came out in uh, 2020. And they've got some variations in terms of performance and other specifications. This is the J, which is really the low end of what they offer, but for my usage, absolutely perfect. So basically I'm able to put four hard drives in. And I've put just two hard drives in there, two four terabyte drives, because I didn't have the money to be able to fill it up with four. And that's one of the reasons why I bought a four. And again, I'll talk about that at the end. But really it was very simple. So let's just go over to the computer and let's go through the steps that it needed to actually get it set up and working and give an example of some of the things you can do with it. So as I've mentioned, the DS420J can hold four hard drives. You get everything you need in the box, including a network cable. You don't get the hard drives itself. Mounting the hard drive is really simple. You just pull off the back. There are four screws that undo with your hand. There are four plastic trays and you simply just pop the hard drive into the tray. And then there are holes there that you use to screw it to the tray. And all the screws that you need are provided inside of the box, depending on whether you're using two and a half or three and a half inch hard drives. Then once you have them screwed in, you just slide them in. And as you can see, the connectors are there at the back and they just pop in quite easy. It's all lined up, machine lined up. So there's no struggling, no wiggling required. You just slide it straight in and then push it in firmly and the drives are installed. Then you just put the cover back on, connect up the power and connect up the network. So once you have it connected up to the internet, you go to find.synology.com in your web browser on a computer connected to the same network as the disk station. That will then find it and allow you to connect to it where you can start the configuration process. After you are connected to it successfully, the next step is to actually set it up. And the first thing I'll ask you to do is install the latest version of the disk station manager software. Now, when you install the latest version of the disk station manager, it will erase all the data that is on the hard drives. That's not a problem in this case because it knows they are empty hard drives. So it will format those drives and download the software, which does take about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection. Now, once that has uh, been installed and rebooted, you then get a chance to set up some very simple things like the name of the server. I am going to go with NAS4, 4 because it's 4Bay. Then you put in a username and password so that only authorized people can access the drive. And so I've put in Gary here because 
well, that's my name, and a password that I know, and no, it's not secret or password or password one, two, three, four. That would be a little silly. And then it goes ahead and continues with the configuration. Now, at this point, you get a chance to set up some other things to do with connecting to Synology's uh, website and allowing you to access it from uh, outside the net. I've skipped all those. That's not something that I'm interested in setting up. I want my device only to be accessible from within inside of my home. You can also install some of the common packages. Again, I'm doing that later, so I'm skipping that now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just um, run it directly. And again, I'm not going to let find.com find my drive kind of publicly. I'm just gonna keep this all as private as I can. And then that's it. We are now inside of the disk uh, station manager. You go through some uh, initial uh, things like, again, do you wanna do this, do you wanna do that? Not really. And here it just shows you these are the places you go to, the package manager, the control panel, to actually get things running. And once all that's done, there we go. That is the default desktop that you get. This is inside your web browser, of course, for the uh, disk station manager. Now there is a control panel which you can go to and here you can access all kinds of interesting things. It, now the first thing I want to do is change this to not use DHCP but to have a fixed IP address. And the reason for that is I do that for all of my permanent devices. So I'm going to change that now to 103 which is just a number that I've assigned according to my little map that I have here. And it does it. And the great thing is even when it applies these settings and reboots it does actually redirect your browser to the new address. So actually you can carry on using it straight away without having to go and look for it again. I thought that was a quite a nice touch there uh, from uh, Synology. Now by default the uh, disk station works with Windows sharing so if you go into the control panel here you can see that SMB uh, is enabled and it's in the workgroup workgroup which is the default so you can find that from within inside Windows ex um, File Explorer really easily. Now if you want to start sharing files you go to the file station it tells you but you're not sharing anything because by default it doesn't share the whole disk and say hey let's you have to do it so Going in, I'm gonna create my first volume. I'm gonna be very imaginative with my naming and call it Gary. And with the description, well, it's Gary stuff. And what is it? Well, it's gonna be using the volume number one, which is the only volume, which is four terabytes. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And then you have different options here on how you want to set up this uh, share on the network, including on whether you want to encrypt the data on the hard drive or not. And here we can see that if we now go over to Windows and then we are actually on side of that, inside of that uh, Gary share, we can start creating some new folders. This may be something you'd want to do, backups, for example, or uh, maybe, you know, photos, you know, whatever it is that you want to create on here that you're going to need uh, on your network attached storage documents and so on. And also, if you notice, whatever you create there on Windows, you can still see internally using the uh, file station. We just refresh this now, and those are the folders that we just created, backups, documents, and photos. Now here I'm gonna do a quick test to see how fast it can copy these files over. Here we've got about 1.42 gigabytes of files, and there you go, 114, 112, 110, Pretty consistent speed. Now that's basically the max speed you're gonna get out of a gigabit ethernet connection. So this is a gigabit ethernet connection and it's maxed out. So the processor's capable of doing it. The hard drives are capable of keeping up with it. And we can also do it the other way. Now we're going from the NAS back to the PC, very similar speeds. So obviously for peak file performance, it doesn't have a problem at all. You can also install other packages. For example, I'm gonna install the download station, which is a little program that if you have a lot of things you want to download, let's say maybe overnight, then you can put in the URLs. It even supports torrents so that you can download them and then they are downloaded directly onto your network attached storage. It means you can shut your PC down, but you can let the little network attached storage run and do its thing. Quite a handy little thing if you've got lots of files that you need downloading. There really are many, many different types of uh, packages that you can install here. Here's another one, for example, the audio station allows you to turn your uh, Synology into a media center so you can access songs and uh, audio uh, as you want from uh, the web, from compatible devices, There's even an app for uh, Android and for iPhone so that you can connect to it and listen to that music directly from the NAS itself. There's actually a whole bunch of uh, different packages installed here. 
In one sense, I think it's great. I think that's really, really interesting. On the other side, I would like to caution about not over-installing. I noticed you can install web servers and you can run WordPress and you can run databases and you can run all kinds of stuff. Probably because, you know, underneath there's Linux and so all the stuff is available there you can install. But really, I would say the best thing is to just limit this to being a NAS with maybe a few bits of extra functionality that you want to add in. So you don't overload the CPU or the RAM during the kind of normal usage. It's also worth mentioning if you want to access drives that are formatted in XFAT, and that's the version of the FAT filing system that's a bit better for larger hard drives, for example, on SD cards, if it's an SD card greater than 32 gigabytes, then it will be formatted in XFAT. You need to pay $3.99 to get that access built into your uh, Synology and that's because the technology is owned by Microsoft and you need to pay a license to get access to it. So going back to the music, we can see that a, a new share called music was automatically created. I'm going to copy some MP3 files over. These are the MP3 files you can download from YouTube's uh, audio library for using as background music for your videos. Then you can go into the audio station and you can start listening to listen to the music. And as I said, you can also listen to them uh, from uh, Android and iOS. Now, earlier you noticed it was automatically using uh, volume one, which was uh, four terabytes. If you go into the storage manager, you can actually see that by default, it's taken my two hard drives, which are four terabytes each. And then of course, four terabytes each would be eight terabytes, but actually it's using redundancy. It's using RAID one effectively, although it's called a Synology hybrid RAID. So there is data protection for one drive to fail and then all the data is still there. And of course, I've got two more slots that I can fill up at any time. And I've got a lot of control over how I want to configure those um, drives and to manipulate the volumes and the, the RAID setup on the uh, device just using this web interface. So really, really, impressed by how easy that was to get up and running with redundancy uh, and it just worked okay so as i said earlier on i will talk about whether you should buy a one drive two drive or four drive or even more now basically when you've got a one drive uh, unit that means you can only have one obviously drive in it and if that drive fails then you lose everything that's on that drive so it's okay if you've got that and a backup of that data somewhere else either in the cloud on your PC, it's acting as just a backup of what you've got on your PC and you want to have a second copy of it. But if you want to have it for something that's a bit more robust, then you're going to need more than one drive. So that's why I wanted to go with either a two drive or a four drive unit. And when I was looking at it, I thought to myself, well, what should I do? Now, the two drive was much more in my price range. Uh, I could have got a two drive and then maybe I could have afforded six gigabyte hard drives. And I thought to myself, well, actually, Gary, why don't I get the four drive one, the four bay one, put in just two drives now, because at some point in the future, in a year's time, I'll save up enough money that I can actually put in two more hard drives. And I don't have to put in another two sets of fours. I can put in two sixes, two eights, maybe two tens by then if the prices have changed. So then actually it gives me a way of growing the storage. And then as I do that, then many years after that a couple of years after that i can actually take out the two four terabytes now and put in another two and so having four gives me this ability to kind of shuffle my storage and keep growing it now i'm talking about multiple years here and i think that's fair to do that because before buying this particular one i spoke to a friend of mine who has a two drive uh, version an earlier version of the same kind of disk station and he's had his for six years and it runs absolutely perfectly and hasn't given him any trouble whatsoever so my thinking is well if it can last six years if it can last even 10 years then changing the storage and upping the storage shuffling these discs in and out as i buy bigger and better hard drives uh, but keeping the base unit the same that sounds like a plan for a future investment where it can also meet my hard drive needs okay so as i said at the beginning definitely a thumbs up for the disc uh, disc station 420j from synology uh, really easy to use and i've got uh, no expectations i'm gonna have any problems with it whatsoever and of course hard drive failures and all that they just happen all the time, but that's not going to be the fault of the Synology, of course. Okay, so that's about it. So my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, and why not subscribe to the channel? Because maybe you'd like to see some other videos that I make. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.